Let's get on to something hilarious, shall we? Um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, if Greg Kelly is the most miserable person on the internet, Tucker Carlson is the most confused. A man who, um, it's, it's pretty incredible to have dual forehead butt cracks um, as your defining characteristic in media. Nothing defines <laughs> Tucker Carlson like the dueling butt cracks he has in his brow as he's like, I'm just selling the, I'm just curious. Look, I, you know, this is something, fuck, I don't even have, I have one. I have to pull in the, like, I have to pull my eyebrows together so hard it makes my forehead cramp to do that. <laughs> but um, uh, he was lo lovely enough to have on Jeffrey Clark. Now, Jeffrey Clark, for those of you who haven't been following along with the January 6th committee, and I can't believe you're not because it's must-see TV and it's a lot of fun. And um, I, if you can't watch it when it's live, uh, it believe me, it's it's worth popping up and putting on the background while you're vacuuming and cleaning up around the house or doing dishes because it's you'll 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 sit there with a a vacuum cleaner in your hand that's turned off just watching it. <laughs> that's what I did. I was like, all right, I'm gonna put this on. I mean, I know what's basically going on and like in between the statements, I'll I'll just do it real I'll clean real quick. Well oh. Huh. I did not know that. And so um it's it's <laughs> it's so worth it. But Jeffrey Clark um is the is the Carter Page of John Eastman's. And in uh Tucker had him on because his house was raided and they they apparently, word on the street is that they punted uh, the the testimony about Clark was supposed to happen like a week ago, but they punted it because when they told the DOJ, the DOJ was like, "Oh yeah, that fucker. We're looking at that fucker." And like, can you wait? Because we're getting a warrant. Because we need to make sure he doesn't start shredding shit the minute he realizes he's up. And uh, is Carter Page the Cato? Yes. Um, so the. <laughs> In this, you know, they, so they raided his house to make sure he wasn't shredding information, blah, blah, blah. And by the way, they have, they have duplicates of stuff, but they went in with electronic sniffing dogs, not electronic dogs that sniff things, but electronics sniffing dogs, dogs that can find computers and laptops and, and, uh, and phones and shit when they're buried and hidden and stuff. I mean, that's a, that's a real thing. Like we're drug sniffing bombs we've known about for a long time because drugs for the most part, especially weed. And I'm sorry to my pot smoking friends, fucking stinks. It stinks. You stink. It stinks. Stop doing it. it stinks. Don't, I mean, I knock yourself out, but you fucking stink. I'm just fix it. Do something. Smoke all you want, but there, there should be, a, if there's going to be a 420 smoke, there's got to be a 445 bath in, in bath salts and jasmine or something. Just something. Good Lord. Anyways, <laughs> bless your hearts, but Christ. And, uh, it, but they, uh, you know, and then bomb sniffing dogs, you're like, oh, okay. Yeah. Maybe, you know, I you think black powder probably has a distinct smell, but C4 and all these other things, these bomb, you know, they can smell this kind of stuff. But now we have dogs that can sniff out electronics. Wait till we all have bionic parts and they got dogs walking through the, the, the fucking airport sniffing you to see if you're a, a full human. I'm very excited about it. Febreze. Does not cover it, Suze. Does not. Yep. All right. Anyways. Oh, look. He's got the... Uh, what, a, what a surprise he'd be making this hand gesture. Uh, apparently, he went to the same communication school that uh, Don Jr. skipped out of. You sit in your seat, read Joe Biden's staff prepared card today. You oh, they're talking... By the way... Um, Biden has a note about how the how the meeting's going to go because they, they got to get through it and get on with their day. So a, a well-coordinated White House, by the way, all White Houses have had this kind of thing. You come in, you sit down, they're going to do this, then we're going to do this, and we're going to read this, and then you'll introduce them, and then somebody else will introduce the other person while you're sitting, and then you'll get up, say final remarks, and then you'll greet everybody, and we'll fucking get out of here because we've got a phone call at 3.30. This is actually a positive thing. He showed his card. He didn't give a shit. Um, and neither would I. Like, it's a... It's a rundown. It's how you organize stuff. They'll probably show a picture of it. But the, hold on. Um, it, it was a big thing. I mean, this is this is their, let's see, Biden cheat sheet, I think they were calling it. Um, yeah. Yeah, Biden caught with eight point, yeah, this is the express, hold on, accept, da-da-da. 
Um, is there a picture of it? No. Let's see. Uh, U.S. President's films uh, with a piece of paper which clearly outlined what he should do to a televised meeting that went uh, with wind industry executives. 79-year-old was instructed to speak to specific people. Thank him for leaving. Eight-point plan referred to Biden as you threw out... Um, uh, this has me, uh, has to, this says to me he has serious cognitive failure. I think it's extraordinary. Or they just, uh, yeah, Sky News Australia said that. Um, let me find the picture. Get back in here. I'll say, uh, get back. There we go. Image. No, I want image. Where is it? Yeah, there you go. This is the, this is the picture that they're talking about. Um, because he wrote notes on the back of it because he didn't really need it. But they, like, see, I'll show you. Look, there's his notes. Biden spotted with cheat sheet as White House attempts to avoid another guy. By the way, the, the front of it was just like how the meeting's organized. This is today. Here's your meeting. Here's a card for the meeting. What's happening? How are we going to do this? We're doing it for TV. I don't want anybody stepping on everybody. This is like reasonable work. Like this screams efficiency to me. But the reason he showed the back of it is because he'd made his own notes. Resources, ideas, I hear you. Like, he's just going through this. He wrote his notes down, like, w points he wants to make. These are questions he would like for them. And then at the end, he puts in, I hear you, because he wants to remind himself to say it. I hear you. I'm listening to your stuff. That's, I mean, it's totally, who gives a shit? You sit in your seat, apparently Ron Klain was worried. By the way, uh, this fucker is reading out of a teleprompter. Does every... Single night. Biden was going to sit in someone else's seats. They put it in all caps. You sit in your seat. All right. Thank you, Mr. President. Well, the January 6th committee is investigating an insurrection in Washington. Yeah. Um, and by the way, it wasn't that bloody, um, but the, the, this is a mockery graphic. Insurrection. But what's interesting is there's been no investigation of any kind into an actual insurrection that happened two years ago. Two years ago insurrection memory hold the dc and white house riots oh sorry may of 2020 the may of 2020 white house dc riots a mob set fire to a historic episcopal church right outside the white house now we remember this so they injured more than 60 secret service officers as they tried to storm the white house grounds now donald trump was inside so the media applauded it and so uh, did they yeah, uh, show a clip of that? I mean, you're showing a clip of this. Show a clip of the media applauding the injury of 60 Secret Service agents by a mob. Go, go for it. Knock yourself out. The, the January 6th committee has a shit ton of footage, buddy. They got footage of, of Trump supporters yelling, hang Mike Pence. They got pictures of a gallows. They have planning documents and text messages back and forth. You can't just show us the event, show us them doing it. So the siege of the White House continued all month. On June 22nd of 2020, that was two years ago this week, the mob mm -hmm. tried to tear down the Andrew Jackson statue in Lafayette Square right in front of the White House. Do you remember this? No one else yes. seems to. Here's the footage. There's a fence up around it. There wasn't enough they could get in there because fencing had been put up. Yes, has anyone checked on the statue to see if its knees are okay? Oh my God, that, I'm, I'm totally frightened. The girl in the bicycle helmet looks like a beast. Check out this woman. I, I don't know how anybody survived this onslaught. It's like, it's like the cops were being attacked by um, the, and such as the Iraq from the, the uh, Miss Universe, or Miss uh, Teen USA. Hold the line. There's a lot of questions. Like, where were the police? They had ropes around the statue right in front of the White House and no one was doing anything about it? I don't know. Trump ran the country like shit. I mean, they should have thought ahead, but... He wasn't really good at it. He was always two weeks behind on everything. There's a lot of blame to go around for that, by the way. Oh. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, who was closest of all the politicians in the country? Who was nearby 
that could have done something about it. Mariel Bowser's office is miles away. A lot. But that's not an insurrection? No, it's not. Uh, it, the, 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 the existence or non-existence of a statue at any point in the entire United States has zero effect on our ability to have a peaceful transfer of power or the electoral college or the ability of people to vote. None. They're not, I, I don't know if this might surprise you, that's not actually a knight in some sort of bizarre chess game for, of, of northern versus uh, southern. Um, if, if you look at America from space, there isn't a chessboard where this gets moved every couple of months and then they we try to knock away one of their pawns. Like, yeah, it's fucking, yeah. Well. Not if no one remembers it even happened. Well, that's 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 true. Not if anybody wasn't filming themselves saying that they were going to kill a, any particular politician or were on their way to do it. And that's why that footage has been memory hold. You probably why has it been memory hold? You found it. We haven't seen it in the last two years. Yes, uh, it's no longer germane to the conversation. That's because what's happening in Congress right now is not about an insurrection. It's about using the mechanics of the federal government, which you pay for, especially the intel and law enforcement agencies. To protect statues. Oh, no, that's okay. To crush and silence anyone who opposes the Democratic Party. Uh, no, no, no. I mean, uh, like Bowers, for example, supports the Republican Party. Every, uh, most of the key witnesses that have spoken vote Republican, are Republican, and going to vote Republican again. Some of them have even said that they would vote for Trump again, which amazes me, but whatever. They're not getting crushed. Guess what? They'll still, after this is done, they'll have the ability to vote Republican. And all of them are the exact same height. Joe Biden. That's not an overstatement. Yes, it is. It's uh, ridiculous and hyperbolic and silly, and you're a goofy fuck, and j looking concerned doesn't actually make something concerning. One of the political opponents of the January 6th committee is targeting is a man called Jeff Clark. He was a... Yes, uh, Jeff Clark, who uh, looks like a, a jellyfish trying to make out with someone while wearing glasses. Assistant Attorney General during the previous administration. Before dawn on Wednesday, which is, say, yesterday. Okay, all right, thank God. Yesterday is just too soon. All right. A large group of armed federal agents... What? When did federal agents start getting guns? I thought those were just for sovereign citizens. Wearing body armor with weapons. The body armor was had weapons? Fuck, they'll give a gun to anybody. I, not, not only am I got a gun, I'm wearing a vest. And a vest has a gun. I have never felt so safe in my life. I could, I almost feel safe enough to go into an elementary school. Raided Jeff Clark's home. Mm-hmm. They dragged him into the street in his pajamas. Now... Oh, how did this, how the street got in his pajamas? I'll never know. What did Jeff Clark do wrong? Um, well, was, I think they were, the reason they dragged him is so he wouldn't do something wrong. Was he selling fentanyl? Was he human trafficking on the Mexican border? No. Well, not from DC, obviously. It's, I mean, geographically, that wouldn't make sense. Jeff Clark did not commit any crime. Uh... This is the face of a man who doesn't believe what he's saying right now. I don't. I don't want to step on uh, Dr. Scott's feet or uh, the the dude who's on uh, Stuttering John's program. Sometimes you know, doing body language. Look at that face right there. That's that's a guy who just said something he doesn't believe and is slightly worried that, like the Matt Gates tape, it will bite him in the ass a little bit later. What he did wrong was calling for an investigation into voter fraud. Uh, no, lots of people did that. None of them got their houses raided. Calling for an investigation into voter fraud. Shit tons of people did that. We are happy to have Jeff Clark join us now. He's a senior fellow with the Center for Renewing America. And he's so confused. He wasn't expecting to be on this. And by the way, the Center for Renewing America, this, we've seen these assholes before. We've seen that background before. I got to go look it up. Remember that? It's weird that he works there. Huh. Jeff, thanks so much for joining us. This is a... a it's devastating. It's devastating. When a, when a man can't destroy evidence, uh, what is this country coming to? I mean, it's almost as if this country has learned a valuable lesson from Enron. But almost, I mean, this is Soviet 
A, yeah, it's totally Soviet. Yeah, that's why he's talking to you right now and able to come on the program and shit talk the government. You know, because they did that in the Soviet Union all the time. They still do it in Russia. Yeah, I don't know if you know this. If you want to go on uh, TV in, in Russia and say Vladimir Putin raided your house and he's a fucking criminal and he's not legitimate and all he has, they totally let you. Account, really. So tell us what happened. Yeah, tell us what happened. And, and are these your PJs? Are, are these the PJs in question? And why? PJs. I it is, and good to be here, uh, Tucker. It's good to be anywhere other than the gulag. So yesterday at about just before 7 a.m., there was loud banging. <clears throat> just, uh, let's see. Real quick. Uh... Let's go back. Can I move this back? So this would be the 20, yeah, that's gotta be the 22nd. Um, so on the 22nd, uh, sunrise, um, pre-dawn raid, right? Pre-dawn, pre pre-dawn raid, okay. Uh, just before seven, he says. The uh, sun came up at 5.43 a.m. in D.C. on the 24th. Just, uh, or sorry, on the 22nd, just for the record. Um, matter of fact, it happens, if you'll notice, it bulbs, it goes up in the in the summer. And yeah, there you go. Just just saying, pre-dawn raid. So it, was, so it was dark out, even with the sun. They waited until... <laughs> Until the sun had been up for a solid two hours before their pre-dawn raid. Banging <laughs> at uh, my door, insistent banging. Insistent banging. Well, I didn't even know they had it in them. Hmm. So I just rushed down as fast as I could. Yes, and I and my stocking and Ma and her cap had just settled down for a long spring nap. I fi you know, quickly figured out you know, that there were agents there. I hope. <laughs> yeah. Open the door and ask. Was it the whole FBI open the door part? Asked for the courtesy to be able to put some pants on uh, and was told, no, you got to come outside. So. Uh... <laughs> he was obviously wearing, he was wearing pajamas or uh, again, I'm just picturing him dressed in kind of like an old, like uh, dressing gown. Uh, look, look at this is shocking to Tucker. A man without pants in the street. I came outside. They swept the house. Eventually, they let me go back. They swept it. That was nice. Oh, that's lovely. Did they did they uh, dust your bric-a-brac? Back inside and uh, put the pants on, but... Uh... They put the pants on. Wow. These are full service. The FBI comes in. I mean, they got to service a... They got to serve the subpoena. That's their job. But then I, they find out that they clean up afterwards and help you get dressed? That is... That is white glove treatment. Uh, then, you know, by my count at one point, uh, you know, 12 agents and two uh, Fairfax County police officers. Uh-huh. <laughs> so you want to keep count because you don't want them like 12 went in and 11 came out. And then for the next three days, you're like, honey, do you hear? Is, is there somebody in the... I swear to God. Did one of those agents hide? I smell farting. I think someone's in the floorboards. Uh, went into my house, uh, searched it for three and a half hours. They even brought along something, Tucker, I've never seen before uh, or heard of, a uh, electronic sniffing dog. Yes, uh, uh, not a leg, again, not an electronic dog that sniffs, a s dog that sniffs electronics. And, and you wouldn't believe what he found in the shoebox under the bed. Uh, they took all of the electronics from my house uh, and... Uh, yep, the, all the electronics, your TVs, your uh, DVR systems, your cable box, they took all of the electronics. Uh, you know, I, I don't blame the, the agents, I think. No, no, of course not. It, you know, what you're talking about in terms of weaponization is really about uh, who's pointing the agents and telling them what to do, Tucker. So Peter Strzok, who works at the FBI, is effectively a criminal in my, <laughs> my view. In your, oh, well, in your view, well, then I, I, I think then you should probably be able to direct the FBI to his door then. Never really punished, sent out a tweet today mocking you and gloating over the fact that the Biden administration stole 
your cell phone and will now be reading all of your private messages. I mean, at hold on. Let's uh, let's I'm, I'm excited about that. I like Peter Strzok. Let's see what Peter Strzok had to say. Uh, Peter Strzok. There we go. Uh -huh. da, 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 da. Let's see. We'll go back to. Um. Back to a couple days with 20, hold on. Uh, how much of it? Dark sense of humor, kind of simple non-story guys complete. Okay, so there's two tweets from Struck that I can see in here. Um, for From Virginia to Nevada today, several coordinated subpoenas and search warrants served and executed by the FBI and DOJ surrounding fake elector scheme. Sure doesn't feel like a nothing burger. And then uh, federal investigators descended in the home of Jeffrey Clark, a former DOJ official, on Wednesday in connection with the department's sprawling inquiry into efforts to overturn the 2020 election. Increasingly large FBI DOJ scope, even more activity to come. And then this, uh, um, is there one before that? New era of criminalizing politics wars in the U.S. almost 18 months ago, hundreds of people planned an insurrection, all because Trump uh, refused to concede. Uh, guaranteed glass water got more attention than the average PDB. That's funny. Yeah, you guys have seen this, right? This is uh, this is from that documentary um, uh, that that the January six committee got a hold of. the The history of Donald Trump and glasses of water is storied and uh, has as much girth as ridiculousness. And um, well, watch you'll you'll see. This is this. There's so much wrong with his editorial and and sort of props and uh, set design issues in this. This is a minute and 11 seconds. Here you go. The White House. Okay. Beautiful. By the way, this reminds me, beautiful shot. They're letting him see. They're, they've got a monitor up for him to look at. He insisted. Um, remember the time when he actually got a, he had to do his, um, his nationwide address and he got, he stained his shirt and he didn't realize the camera was rolling. This, this has the same energy. Oh, I don't think you want to have the water in the picture, right? No, no. Water looks bad. Looks, makes you look thirsty and weak. You can take it off. Yeah. yeah, get the water. Take it. Take the water away. Don't. I'm not gonna. Okay. Yeah, put it over there, Nick. Yeah, get it away from me. Get that. Can get I it away. Table as well? take, yeah, might as well take the table. Yeah, might as well take the table. Now I'm sitting alone in the middle of a room. It's almost like the future of the videos from Mar-a-Lago, where he's oddly in an empty room. How are you? Oh, good. Very good. Thank you. You know what you can do, Nick? Sir? Put the table back because yes, it's missing something. Put the table back and put the water on the table without the thing on top of it. The thing on top of it. You mean without the cover on the cup? Okay. And then, watch him. This is so weird. So this is Cap... Uh, Cap... This is the nation's... The White House. This is the White House's furniture. This is, like, some of the furniture in these rooms is from, the like, pre-Civil War. Some of the stuff here, I mean, some of it's probably, you know, stagecraft stuff anyways, but the, but a good portion of it, if you're borrowing a table for something like this, like it's up against a wall with a plan on it for something, this, you know, this is high quality, nice stuff because it's the fucking White House. It should be nice. Put the candle back. Now watch this. Just let me show you, like, I mean, remember, this is the asshole with the gold leafed uh, bedroom. How does that look? It looks great. Looks just out of reach. Drag it closer. And there. Look at it. Look at it. Move it the glass around. And then. Go ahead, take it out. Yeah, take the water. No coaster. No nothing. It's just so lame. I know it's not a big deal, but it's uh, like. Look at him. He's like. And he's chuffed. He's happy with himself. Yeah. That's so much better. All right. Where's the best place for water? Right. He's like the front, the back. No, that might fall. People will think. And he moves it to the middle. Let's go. <laughs> Sorry. Just, it's so lame. So, uh, 
Hold on. Where were we? Oh, yeah, this asshole. What point can we say the Department of Justice, where you once served, is a political instrument? It's completely out of control. Control? That, it, was, it, was, it was a squirrel. Yeah, I, I think this is highly political. <laughs> what is happening to your face? Oh. I, I look forward to Tucker's Don Knotts years. When, you know, he's, he's aging like Bill O'Reilly, but they keep him on the air because the numbers are still there. And he's like, oh, oh. Oh, we got a couple of rules up here on the rock. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> Politicized and. I feel like we should all just stare at the screen. He used to bring children into the backyard and show them a skeleton he had hidden by a tree. It was a squirrel. All right. It's also part, uh, Tucker, uh, if you didn't know it. He doesn't. Just assume he doesn't. Whatever you're talking about of a nationwide effort yesterday. There were multiple states where multiple- Yeah, it's almost like the government is operating in a coordinated and functioning status, as opposed to being behind the eight ball on fucking everything. People were roughly simultaneously, uh, you know, rated for their electronic devices. Hmm. It, huh. They're like rated for their electronic devices. We, now, Stop me if I, it, I might be overstepping here, but could it be um, people that you, sir, had contact with and that were actively involved in the January 6th scheme, uh, as has been pointed out by the January 6th committee and their discovery and witnesses coming forward and calling the tip line and providing information? Is it is there a chance that these raids were on people that, would corroborate evidence that was on your electronic device by being the receiver of messages from yours while you were a receiver of theirs. So checking them in a court of law, for example, would pro no, nah, it's probably just, probably just, they just pick people they didn't like, probably just rounding up conservatives and throwing them in FEMA, FEMA camps, right? Uh, and that obviously requires a high level of coordination. Or a medium level of coordination? Probably a medium level. And look, um, with the hearing uh, that was pointed at me and, and targeting me today. Uh, well, I mean, I'm sure all criminals feel targeted. Uh, with, uh, you know, the, the uh, special audience member of Sean Penn. So, you know, this is Hollywood. Uh, you know, the, the very next day, you know, it, it looks highly coincidental. And Tucker, you know, I just don't believe in coincidences. Yeah, it's, it's not a coincidence. It's not accidental. It is. It's, it's part of information that they found that was extraordinary. And they they realized they have a lot on you and there's more to be had and you might be getting rid of shit. And the fact that you get rid of shit when they already have it from other sources might prove that you have an awareness of guilt. And that uh, plays into the case that they're making both against Trump and against this asshole. By the way, um, this will be one of those um, interviews that Tucker later on either continues to talk about this dude's innocence that he doesn't believe in after he gets indicted or will pretend he didn't have. Talk about memory holing at the beginning of the clip. So you know Chris Ray, of course, who runs FBI. You probably know Merrick Garland. He's been around Washington a long time. Why do they hate you? Both of them have... Why does everyone on Trump's legal team think you're a complete jackass? Decided to pervert and corrupt our most basic institutions on behalf of Joe Biden would- Well, they didn't. I mean, uh, um, it's the premise that's wrong. Did you think they were capable of doing that when you worked there? I argued in front of uh, Merrick Garland. I got a very uh, respectful hearing. I think uh, I was gonna win that case, but we wound up actually uh, settling it in the shadow of what you know everyone assumed was gonna be a victory. Sometimes that happens in financial cases. And uh, Chris Ray was with me in the Justice Department. He was just in the criminal division back in Bush 43. So I do uh, know both of them and- And over the years, uh, they've grown to know me as uh, nothing short of the most contemptible asshole they've ever spent time with, to the point on where all of the AGs were going to quit in mass if this dickhead was put in charge of DOJ. You know, I, I just think we're living in a in an era 
that I don't recognize. And increasingly, uh, Tucker, I, I don't. Yes, uh, you might, because for a long time, you've Peter principled yourself to the top of a ladder you don't belong at. And you had uh, access to the president of the United States you had not earned. And you tried to end run around your leadership to be involved in a criminal enterprise. And it worked for a while. Trump was covering your ass. You thought he was going to win. You were going to help him win. That was going to pay off. And now the world is something you don't recognize. I, I'm sure the same thing is true of all the characters in Goodfellas. Recognize the they were shocked. This, this prison where I'm slicing garlic is, it, it's, I don't recognize this world. It looks nothing like my live, living room. This is not my beautiful house. This is not my beautiful wife. How did I get here? You know country anymore with these kinds of Stasi like things happening. Stasi. Dude, you went the fuck home. They they let you go in and put on pants after this. They cleared the space and then they let you go back in and get dressed. Stasi. Yeah, it, th both of these assholes think he lived through the opening 10 minutes of inglorious bastards. Yeah, this is Stalinist. At some point somebody's going to fight back. And mm -hmm. Oh fight back. You mean when the FBI agents show up with a lawful subpoena where you have uh, uh, legal remedies available to you to push back against it and even sue the U.S. government if they overreached, um, they're going to fight back that way? Or or do you mean some other way, Tucker? And it's going to get super ugly. I, I pray that doesn't happen. But but uh, I'll be we'll be there to cover it and say, I told you so. And we're rubbing our hands together uh, hoping for it. I, I think it probably will. Look at this. By the way, Tulsi Gabbard, the left is denying objective reality. Good times. It's just very, the whole thing is so sad. And it's so sad. It's so sad. It's so sad that I, Tucker Carlson, have to demean myself by interviewing you, someone that obviously everyone thinks is a, is a miserable asshole and uh, fill a segment with uh, such boring details and the only exciting part was when you said you had no pants on. And then I realized that just meant you had pajamas and not regular pants. And that, that and then, it, then it all, it just went downhill from there. And I'm sorry that you were caught up in it, in your pajamas. Like, oh my God. Yes. Of all the, if you're going to be caught up in, in some sort of, you know, Stasi, Stalinist kind of raid on your home, you want to be wearing a suit of armor, like, you know, like, uh, Uther Pendragon and, and Excalibur. They, need, they could have just called you. <laughs> uh, if they called him, he would destroy shit. They couldn't have just called him. That's why you don't call people like that because they get rid of things. That's, that's, they couldn't. Yeah. And by the way, uh, they probably could have just called Hillary for Benghazi, I suppose. Right, Tucker? It's outrageous. Jeff Clark, well, I appreciate you coming on. Oh, outrageous. He said outrageous. Okay. So he doesn't believe it. Any, uh, the use of the word outrageous is a dead giveaway um, that it's a, it's a selling point word that nobody uses in regular conversation. It's always when somebody like these, these accusations against me are outrageous. That means they're true every single time. Anytime you see a politician say this is outrageous, these charges are outrageous. That's an admission. Just, just chalk that up. Just, and any, and the fact that Tucker said it instead of this dickhead means that Tucker doesn't believe his story. He just thinks it's outrageous. This is just terrible. Whatever. Uh, it's outrageous that they can come in there. I'm, a, I'm outraged that they can raid your house. Not that I don't think they're going to find something and that the raid might work out, but it just out. I find that outrageous. We. I hope you'll Thanks come back lot, and Tucker. tell us where this winds up. It's yeah, tell us where it winds up. I don't, I don't know anyone in the news, so I won't be able to find out. I mean, it's not, it's not a big story. Um, Jeff, uh, I got to be honest. Uh, I, after you leave, I don't think we're ever going to hear about this again because I, I, I only watch the clips that my staff prepares for me um, to get my, you know, my creases going. Creeps. Creeps. Listen to that shit at the end. What? Appreciate you coming on. We, I hope you'll Thanks come back lot, and tell us where this winds up. These creeps. These creeps. These creeps. These FBI creeps. These judges that give subpoenas after hearing evidence. These creeps. They're creeping around. Everybody, you know what they did? They only did this because they desperately wanted a, a gander at Jeffrey Clark in his PJs. Standing there with no pants on. 
looking like a cross between Tom Cruise and Risky Business singing some Bob Seger and the Maytag Repairman. I mean, that's if that's your fetish, we got it covered. If I was in his position and they said, come on out, can I put some pants on? They say, no. I go, give me one second. Siri, play uh, Old Time Rock and Roll by Bob Seger. that's going to do it. Oh, I didn't say, hey, good. I was worried that it was actually going to trigger. I was trying to say it without saying it. And I would have just gone, nin, 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 nin. right, slid out onto the, uh, into the driveway. Just take those old records off the shelf. Mr. Sparks, please, can you step away? I sit and listen to them by myself. Is that a electronic sniffing dog? The, today's music ain't got the same soul. <laughs> I like that old time of rock and roll. Yeah, I'm telling you. Yeah. I would go into night moves after that, you know, and then working on the night moves. It's a long search. I'd need, I'd need to do a long, like a three hour concert. I'd have to do a Chris Christofferson cover. This shit went on so long. <laughs> Mr. Sparks, step out. Can I put on some pants? Nope. Ding, 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 ding. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for letting me be outside without any pants on. <laughs> so, uh, um, and I'm, I, this was an exclusive, just like the Matt Gates one. You know, this this is where people go. That you got to go on Tucker. Just go on there. That'll give you cover for a while. Okay. <laughs> 